We'll now take an examination of the two relationship we've discussed before. One which we call the motor effect and the other one which is the force on a charge in a magnetic field. So here on the left, we have a positive charge. It has some charge Q. It's heading to the right with some velocity V and it's in some magnetic field V. From our previous work, we know that it will experience a force, which is equal to QVB sine theta. And this force, we can use the right-hand palm rule to then determine the direction, which will be upward. So your force will be upward. Now over here, we have what we would say the motor effect, and we could calculate this force. So this force F, would equal B I L sine theta. And again, we would use the right-hand palm rule again to do this. And we would again determine that the force in this case will be upward. So in both cases, we have the force being determined by the right-hand palm rule. And in both cases, you get the idea that they are both upward. Now, both of them have magnetic fields going into the pinch. Both of them have a force going upward. But the difference, if you were to think of it as a difference, is, that, I mean, they're different things, right? On the left-hand side, we're saying that we're talking about charges that are moving. Remember, they have to be moving. And on the right-hand side, we're talking about current. But you might want to think about what is current? And based on the work we've did before, all the way back with electrostatics, we define current I to be the rate of flow of charge. And mathematically, we're saying that I equals Q over T. That is a relationship that we have. So in a way, current is moving charge. In fact, we define current I, conventional current I, is the flow of positive charge. So if we're saying that you've got a Y and there's current flowing through it, we are basically saying that positive charges are going to the right. I mean, many positive charges and so forth, but we're basically, instead of using Q and how the speed at which they're going through and the number of charges going to the right, we're just going, okay, the rate of flow measured in terms of current is that. But conceptually, it is just, we're thinking of it as positive charges going to the right, we're thinking of conventional current. We're not gonna get into the debate between conventional current and electron flow here. So really, you can see that they're really the same thing. It's just that these positive charges are going in the wire. And so the wire experiences a force up is really because the magnetic field is putting these forces on these positive charges going to the right, which then makes the wire go up. Which really then means that these two should basically be the same thing, but maybe expressed in different ways. So maybe let's take a look at it further. We've got F equals QVB sine theta. And we've also got F equals B I L sine theta. And if we take a look at this, we've got sine theta in both. So we don't really need to touch that or deal with that. We've got B in both. So we don't really need to deal with that either. But you've got I and L on the right-hand side. And you've got Q and V on the left-hand side. So we said earlier that I by definition is Q over T, right? It's the rate of flow of charge. So let's do that. Let's change that to Q over T. And we'll leave L for the moment. And you've still got your B and sine theta. So you can see at this point, hey, I've got my Q now. So let's take out our Q. And you've got L over T and you've got your Q You've got your B, you've got the sine theta. 
And let's think of what L over T is. Remember, L is the length of the wire in the magnetic field. So you take a length of your wire and you divide it by T, that's really just measuring velocity. And so really, we're just saying this is V times Q B sine theta. So you can see that both of these formulas ultimately really are equivalent to each other. It's just that this is more convenient when you're talking about charges individually because you're talking about the individual charge and velocity. But this is more convenient when you're talking about wires because you can measure the current in the wire and the length of the wire. It's probably less convenient to talk about the each individual charges because that's not what your measurement is. But really, what we call the motor effect really is the same thing. Both of these are basically different formulas in different circumstances for the same effect. The effect ultimately is the magnetic field exerting a force on moving charges. If you're thinking of those charges as individual charges, then this formula is more appropriate. If you're thinking of those charges in the form of current in a wire, then this formula is more convenient, but they're ultimately the same thing. So if you know how to do questions with this, you should very easily be able to do questions with this because of the same rule, different formula.